So we are live. Hello everybody. Good evening. Sunday evening at the cavern. If anybody hasn't seen the cavern, this is my wee room where I come up. My happy place. I'm up and play drums up here and drink beer and, and play guitar and stuff. It's a good wee happy place. So it's a good place to it's a good place to come up and just sort of hang out with chums and you know just get away and beat the living daylights out of these drums sometimes. But I also like to have all my wee uh, podcasts that I do up here. So sorry, a wee bit late. Uh, I had a wee panic moment there because Pete's ten hours ahead of me. So he is, so I was thinking, is it today? Because it's Monday for him. Is it today or is he thinking Monday night? So I just give him a wee ring there just to make sure. So we're good to go. Uh, Pete Seddon, anybody who doesn't know Pete Seddon, he is one of five men who are currently uh, listed as having completed the 17 feet, one and a half inches carry of the actual Denny Stones. Uh, the first one obviously was my dad. Uh, back in was... It's a, uh, May 1972, <laughs> sorry. Uh, then we had, it was 2014 before the next man managed and that was Mark Felix in 2014 at the Aboyne Games. And then we had the first gathering, uh, which was in August in 2017. And we had two successfuls that time. We had Mark Haydock and we had Brian Irwin. So that made four. So the fifth man, and this, I think he did this, I think it was April, April, yeah, April the 18th, I think it was. Uh, in 2019, it was the same day. I kind of got, I kind of felt it got a wee bit lost, which is why I kind of did the the first podcast with Pete because there was such a focus on on Eddie Hall and Brad Shaw and who else was there? Uh, Robert Aburst was there and Nick Best, you know. So there was a massive thing to be done there, you know. And Pete came along and, and the guys all did really well. And and Brad Shaw set a world record for for actually carrying the stones without setting them down. But then after they'd all finished, I mean, Pete kind of quietly came in in the background and actually did the carry. Did it side by side, made his, made his way across in about three or four lifts and set downs. And it was amazing. You know, so he became the fifth. Now, shortly after that, uh, Pete and I, it was actually the first one of these that I did. Pete and I kind of, Pete, Pete had sort of suggested we have a wee chat. I thought it was a great idea, so he did. And I've done loads since, but because the, the chat that I had with Pete was the first one, we, we got, it went well, we did the live thing and it was great. But I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't know you you had to kind of press a wee button to actually record the whole thing, and you know, so you could actually save it and, and put it up in your, your YouTube or in your Instagram later. So I kind of lost it, which I feel really guilty about. So I'm calling tonight's one Redemption, <laughs> so, um, where well, Pete and I will have a chat. We'll probably cover some of the ground we covered in the last one, but Pete's got a lot going on at the minute, and it's very exciting. And I just want, I want, want you to hear from Pete himself. In the horse's mouth because there's a lot going on obviously at the weekend with what Chloe Brennan did you know at, at the Arnolds I mean the Denny's are on everybody's talking about them and what's going on and, and we have th th there's a lot of sort of background to, 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 to the, the Denny Stones and Donald Denny and how he did it you know I mean there's there's four or five of us who are, are good chums and we all have been around the Denny's for a lifetime and we'll probably sit around a table for an hour or two hours and we'll talk about you know how Donald Denny did it and we'll probably all have different opinions on it you know, because there's nothing written down, so you kind of take all the, the wee bits of pieces of fact that you can get, and you kind of put it all together, and you go, look, at that. this is my opinion, based on the facts that I have to hand on how I think it happened, you know. And one of the things that's, it's, it's the, the carry of the Denny Stones, I mean, Donald Denny didn't say he walked with them, he said he carried them, that was his own words. Uh, now, did he carry them side by side, did he carry them in a straddle, did he lift them and set them down, or did he do it in, in one go? You know, I, I honestly, for years, I never thought it was possible. I really didn't, because I'd seen some really strong guys, you know, some of the strongest guys on the planet, attempt this, and there was, there was nobody was showing any signs of that. And the five that have done it, you know, I mean, I, I know the toll that that took on them to do it with the lift and set down method. But just recently now with Pete and Brian Shaw and Big Laws, you know, what those guys have done, I actually, I, I now genuinely believe it's possible. You know, my own opinion is I think that Donald Denny lifted them and set them down. The, the, the local interpretation is he scuttled them. That's the kind of the thing that came down. I scuttled seems almost a wee bit derogatory, you know, but it's kind of lift and set down. You know, and, and I mean, I, I have no doubt that Denny did it, but I, I think that was the method that he used. But now we're actually at a point, you know, where to me it's always the challenge. It's just get them across the bridge. Doesn't matter how you do it. So long as it's just you and the stones, there's no artificial aids involved. You know, I think that's hugely impressive you know and because only five men have done it since Denny 150 years ago you know that's 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 a hell of a challenge but we are now getting to the point you know where they have got a bit of notoriety the stones and 
you know, the guys are actually thinking, is this possible? Now, Kevin Ferris at the weekend with what he did with the replica Denny's was incredible. You know, and, and the date I've only ever seen with all of that. I mean, I see a lot of people training for the Denny Stones. And the date I've only ever seen two guys actually complete the 17 feet or more uh, in one go with one in each hand in, in, in training. Obviously, it's not with the Denny's because you have to be in Scotland to do that. But Kevin Ferris did it uh, at the Arnolds. He did a massive 23 feeters. It was huge. So it was. And Pete Seddon has done it in training. And he only just did it recently. And I thought, that's the, well, that was the first time I never seen it. And now I've seen it twice within a few weeks of that, you know. So it shows me that it, that, that, that it is possible, you know. And I do think that that is common, you know. So it's very exciting. And without getting into any more sort of setup, I'm going to invite my friend Pete in. Because it's 7 a.m. for him, so he's probably on his way to work. So I don't want to keep him late for work. So, Pete, come on in. So hopefully he will join us any second now. Ah, <laughs> brilliant. I'm getting better at this. Please. How are you doing? Good morning. Hi, Stevie. How you going? I'm doing all right. Mate. Let, me just, let me just get my camera. Good, good. Yeah. It's walky tonight. So there we go. Right. That's it. There we go. How you doing, mate? I'm really good, thanks. How are you? Well, what I'll say is, good eye. Good eye, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, was, uh, I was definitely born and bred in the UK. I just, I just lived in Australia for uh, yeah the last kind of ten or so years. That's all. <laughs> so it's, it's seven a.m. We're just after seven a.m. for you over there, yeah. Uh, yep, it is. I'm uh, basically on my way to work. I've, um, you know, I've certainly got you know whatever time we need this morning, three quarters of an hour or an hour or whatever. But um, you know, I'm. Um, you know, just pulled over in the car and whatever, just sat here. Uh, you can probably see the the background, a bit of a car there. So, um, yeah, look, if, um, you know, I can definitely spend whatever time we need to talk. And I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what we, uh, the ground we cover this morning. Me too, me too. Dude, I could, I could speak for five hours in this without, without taking a breath. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so I'll try and keep it a reasonable time, not get into trouble at work. It's nine o'clock for the UK here, so it's... I'm just having a wee Sunday evening kind of wind down beer. Nice. Uh, so, Pete, I mean, first of all, apologies. I mean, the, our podcast, the last one we did, was the very first one that we done, and I was rubbish at it because I have no idea what I was uh -huh. doing. I didn't know you could record the video afterwards. didn't know what you had to do. So I, I lost uh -huh. our video. So this is kind of let's get a Don't chance. Work. We'll probably cover the same some of the same ground, but there's stuff going on now that I know about. Yeah, easy. <laughs> so there is. Sounds good. Yeah, no, no, that's, um, certainly don't mind talking about the same things again. Um, you know, I'm like you, uh, I like talking about it all the time. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> just but, a little bit more time limited than you are this morning. But like I said, I've still got, still got plenty of it. It's still, we can cover stuff. quite a bit of the yeah. time we do have. So yeah, it's good. The first time I came across you was, it was December 16. Was that the first time you came over? Yeah, right. yeah and you did that yeah, nice side by side. Yes, you know, it's not a lot of people do. You know, it just, everybody, we're all built differently. We all have different levers that work for us. You know, some people side by side suits uh -huh. them better. Some people straddle. But yeah. the side by side, you know, for most guys is a harder lift. You know, and, and that's what you yeah. did the very first time you came over and done it. You know, which was great. And it was such a great lift. Uh -huh. You stood there and held him for a wee while. You know, and you, you had a wee sort of a prayer moment before you, before you did it. So it, it was a very memorable lift for me. You know, and I remember seeing it. And I remember at the time thinking, this guy's different, you know, because there was something different about you than what I'd seen. And then obviously we've become friends now and we've met a few times and yep. you've pressed me above Absolutely. your head, you know. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. But uh, I think it was, was it April? It was April 2019 was the next time you came across. Yep. Now, did you yep. do it twice? Because I know you were there when I came across for, for the Eddie Hall thing and all, and Brian Shaw and all those guys. You were there, but you, you had yep. already done something. Hadn't you? Yeah, basically, yeah, I'd um, I'd arranged it late 2018 to mm -hmm. to do the walk um, in April for April 2019. Yeah, and then I found out while I was over there on on holiday, I was still there. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that um, you know Brian Shaw and his mates were going to be there uh, about five or six days later, so um, I kind of half jokingly asked if I could kind of go and join them. Uh, yeah. They actually agreed to it and, and whatever. So yeah, the, yeah, 
you know, just the rest of history there. <laughs> yeah, and it was, that was an amazing, I mean, everything about that day, I'll never forget it, because it was one of those ones I had been, I, had, I knew it was coming, and I knew what they were going to do, and uh -huh. I've been involved in the discussions about, you know, what we were going to do, yep. and getting it onto the bridge and all that sort of stuff, you yep. know. And yep. I had sort of done all the work that I could do from over here, but then mm -hmm. I took the last and I said, you know what, I, I, I'm going over. So I just said, guys, I'm taking a day off work and going over here. I just, I could, just couldn't have missed it. It was too, it was too, too big an opportunity. And can I like to see all the, the stuff as much as I can going on over there, you know? But it's, it's a bit of a for me too, you know, to get away from Belfast to get away over to Aberdeenshire. But it was definitely worth it. And uh, they had, you know, I had breakfast that morning, you know, and I'm happy about it. But the impressive thing for me was not, I mean, obviously it's hugely impressive that you got them across the distance. I mean, that's that in itself, you know, you full stop, you know, amazing, well done. But it was the fact that you had a really had a, had a really decent attempt earlier on, you know. So you're obviously <laughs> in recovery from that. Maybe when you, when you when you give it your heart and soul like that, it takes a while to kind of to get. You don't just go maximum effort on a Monday and then go out Tuesday and, and just go back to full weight again, you know. So you were still in recovery and right. you managed that, you know. Yeah. No. Basically, um, I carried them on the Saturday, mm -hmm. and then. Um, Shaw and his mates came over on on the Thursday, so you know it's was, it was five days. But like you said, five days probably isn't when you've really gone for it on the previous Saturday. Five days probably isn't a great period of time, um, you know. So how to phrase this one? I actually carried them further, of course. Even on that first carry, I carried them <laughs> further on the um, the day on the bridge. But yeah. I, I, maybe there was just that extra adrenaline, even though. My actual body was kind of deep down fatigued a little bit more. I mm -hmm. guess I had additional adrenaline of, you know, for the mm -hmm. strongest men in the world being there and, oh, yeah. and whatever else. So, um, you know, and then I had that extra target because Brian Shaw walked them, I think, 11 feet, six and a half inches, uh, yeah. kind of five minutes earlier. I was trying unbelievably hard to obviously beat that. Um, yeah. After about... Three or four feet, I thought I've got kind of no chance. And then I got kind of to that eight feet two mark, which was what I'd managed uh, five days earlier. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I started to develop a little bit more confidence that I might go uh, past Brian Shaw's mark. And then it was literally, uh, you know, concentrating on, on controlling those stones is obviously ridiculously difficult. And mm. I probably said this on the, uh, on the last podcast that we did but of all things to happen my um my left hand started opening up a little bit um left hand you know, in, other words, in other words the one with the light dinny the the, uh, the the one the 144 kilo dinny it just started to open up and it, you know i kind of consciously thought it's only 144 kilos i can kind of you know i can get this back and whatever but mm -hmm. Now it just it just slipped and slipped and slipped and then my fingers came open completely. When I say open, I don't mean I had uh, gashes on my hand. I just mean uh, I could no longer grip it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was really, really, really upsetting because uh, oh, I'm not saying for sure that I'd have gone past Brian Shaw's mark, and no. obviously, obviously, everyone that attempted that day can say something that went wrong with the attempt. Brian Shaw could say, look, mate, it's, it's all right you're climbing that, you know, you'd have got another foot and a half if, if you hadn't had to have open, hadn't have opened up. He might say, look, if I'd not kind of done a misstep, the, the step before um, I put them down, then I'd have gone the whole 17 feet in one go. So, you know, I, I get the fact that it's only what you've done. It's not what might have happened. It's not what might have happened if you didn't make a mistake. The reality is yeah. I made it's a yeah. mistake. That's actually something I've been working on, uh, particularly recently. I've been trying to get my grip just um, not as much stronger. Just use better technique with the uh, with the grip. Obviously, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's why I, I have just read one or two of the comments now. Yeah, yeah what, what's your grip right. going? Well, right. Definitely, yeah. it's, um, it's a nightmare. Um, and yeah, that's. Uh, I've actually forgotten what I was saying now, but um, but your yeah, look, the, the grip, at the end yeah. of the day, would I have, if, my, if I'd have got my grip slightly better, would I have gone past Shaw? Would I not have? We'll never know. The reality is I didn't go past him on that single carry. So obviously he held 
the world record uh, for the single carry until uh, Big Loz came along last year and actually went about a metre or three and a bit feet further than uh, than what Brian yeah. Shaw did. So, yeah. Look, yeah. I mean, I'm certainly aiming to, uh, to go past what, Big Loz has, uh, has achieved when, when I get across there. I'm, I'm looking at getting the full, you know, 17 and a bit feet in a single carry. Doesn't mean it will. Again, it's um, kind of no point. You have to have about it. Feet, you know, it it over. I give you, one, one of the things that, that about Loz's attempt that, that I regret not, not doing on the day was actually drawing a line for him to say, that's your mark. Because we did that yeah. on other occasions. You know, we said, look, there, there's your, because Loz was walking. And he was walking and he, he just went as far as he could and he set them down. But you know yourself, you've always got that wee bit. If you've got, there's the line that you can find that wee bit extra. And I think if we had drawn the line for him of the 17 feet, one and a half inches, I don't know, you know, but it's, you know, it's, it's laws, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's the same with yourself. You know, to tell you what, I mean, you're talking about that little, little dinny ring coming in your hand. We say it's only 144 kilos and we tend not to think about it, you know, when we're trading on the rings, but it's like cheese wire. It's a really, really thin ring. You know, it's nine sixteenths of an inch, you know, compared to three yeah. quarters in the big one, you know. So, and I know that a lot of guys have fallen foul of the little one, you know, mm-hmm. with, without expecting it because everybody's focusing on the right one. Well, one That's of the right. most important things that I've seen about it, and you, you, you know about this, I mean, anybody who's walked with the Denny's any distance at all, mm-hmm. you know, from Laws yeah. to Mark Haydock to yourself to Josh and guys like that, I mean, the big one, because it's only connected on a little bolt, so if, if, it, mm-hmm. if it was to turn this way or, or back the way, yeah. there's nothing to stop it. You know, and I remember whenever Josh was yeah. making an attempt at the gathering, it was a bit yeah. of an, a 2018, I think it was, uh, and he was yeah. walking. The big Denny stone came round in front of him, and he just yeah. kicked it out of the way and carried on. I couldn't right, believe yeah. it. One of the most impressive things I've seen, because generally speaking, <laughs> you know, when that, when that big stone comes in front of you, it's game over. You know, because it's, yeah, it's you're probably. not going anywhere. There's nearly 200 kilos in front of you saying you're you're going nowhere, son. You know, so mm-hmm. I thought that was really impressive. And Brian Shaw Absolutely. on his walk kept the big one behind him. He kept it under control. Lead with the left. Mm-hmm. Don't pass it with your mm-hmm. right. You know, all that good mm-hmm. stuff. And we know all that stuff too. You know, we've been talking about a lot of that. You know, and so I, I'm really excited. You know, for 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 what's coming. You know, and and it's just <laughs> what I was saying in the intro. You know, I've only ever seen two people. Walk with the full weight for the full distance of 17 feet, one and a half inches. And the first one was mm-hmm. only a few weeks ago, and it was yourself. And then yeah. since we've seen Kevin Ferris doing it now with, with the Rogue Dennis, the, 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 the Rogue Dennis, which was incredible. You know, but both oh, those things yeah. absolutely blown me away. I, have, I, have no, to I say. definitely appreciate what you're saying about my lift. Um, Kevin Ferris's was just insane. It was. Definitely. Uh, it was, yeah. I pretty much couldn't <clears> believe that. I actually thought he might. I mean, I'd seen some of his training. I thought he might go kind of 17 feet, but I didn't really think he was going to go 25 feet. I thought he was going to end well, up going up into the balcony and walking up in amongst all the, all the spectators <laughs> said he was going that far. I thought they're going to run out of arena here. You know, it was a, a really cool thing to yeah. watch. And, and I mean, with, with no, clothes I mean, as well. I mean, it was, that was a hell of a weekend. So it was. And it, it um, really, I, I noticed, you know, how much Denny Stone activity is going now, you know. So, that, so I thought this is a perfect time for United chat because I know, you know, I, I don't know, Pete, what your your opinion is. If you want to tell folk what you're what you're going to do and when you're going to do it, or do we just um, you know it's, it's your call, well, bro? Yeah, I'll be able <laughs> but to I'm saying it now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, I'll just kind of repeat myself what I was kind of saying five minutes ago. I kind of almost don't want to say that I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do the other, hmm. until I've kind of actually done it. Because, yeah. like, I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm worried about people finding out when I'm making an attempt. That, that's not it at all. It's the fact that as much as I'm happy to talk about techniques and I'm happy to talk about what happened in the past yeah. or whatever, and, you know, Kevin Ferris' attempt and yeah. Chloe Brennan's amazing lift and, you know, Brian Shaw and Laws and the whole lot. Definitely happy to talk about it. I'm happy to talk about mine too, completely. Yeah. I just really wanted, one of the main points that I wanted to uh, to make today was that talking about it, as exciting as it is for, for you guys, as exciting as it is for hopefully me and whatever, until I've achieved it, yeah, it's great kind of having a conversation, Pete, you might go, you know, people message me regularly and whatever and say, 
oh, Pete, you're going to walk 17 feet, one and a half inches and whatever, blah, 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 blah. Or 17 feet, two and whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and I appreciate, I absolutely appreciate the support massively. Mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate the encouragement. Yeah. I think it's really nice for people to recognize the kind of hard work that I'm putting into the training. I think it's great that people have confidence and faith in me and whatever. But I need to do it. Like, yeah, it's, here's the it, thing. It, it, I, I, I've said it, this to you before many times is we all believe in you. Of course we do. The only person that believes, that, the only person that matters, that believes in you is yourself. That's the only belief yeah. that, that matters in anything. And you've got to do that. You have to have that. This is a done deal. I'm coming here. These things are going 17 and a half feet, one and a half inches at the minimum. That's got to be your mindset. And we're talking about that, and, and I, yeah. I see a change in your thinking now, which is great, because it, it's the sort of thing you have the part of it. You know, we, we we all have. And I mean, Brett has has had this. I've had this. You know, I mean, I've I've, I've had a lifetime of performance stage. I don't get stage fright, but I've got it with the Denny's uh -huh. because they mean so much to me. You know, I I've I've yeah. up and I've performed as well as I thought I should. But then uh -huh. there's other times where my mind's right. And look at Brett now. I mean, he just picks them up like they're not there, you know. So once we get past all of yep. that, you know, the, the mind in it, the mind's so strong and can play such a yep. big role in something, you know, that, that that's that's just every day for me. Do you look how easily you pick up the full weight of the stones now in training, you know, <laughs> and the walk you're off? Well, I, don't think, I don't think I pick them up easily. I mean, people, <laughs> again, I'm, I'm, I, this isn't, I'm not trying to be kind of, semi-argumentative here and like yeah. that. I, I don't think it makes it, I don't think I make it look e easy at all. Yeah. I mean, there are people that make, there are people that make it look easy. Mark yeah. Haydock makes it look easy. Mark oh, yeah. Haydock, when I look, when I look at his videos and he's got, you know, just over 200 maybe in his right hand and mm -hmm. 150, 560 or whatever in, in his left hand or whatever. That's, you know, yeah. <laughs> that that's where it's getting uh, pretty crazy territory as far as I'm concerned. I don't, oh, yeah. like, I know, I know it sounds, I'm not doing this for attention or I'm not trying to make you kind of uh, maybe change your mind or anything like that. I actually don't think that I'm that strong. I really don't. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> people tell really? me, people <laughs> tell me they really think I'm are. strong. I don't think you're. I, 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 <laughs> well, thanks, but I don't think I'm strong. I think I need to be stronger. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> well, did you, really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think that there's ever a downside to getting stronger, you know, and making the thing mm -hmm. less difficult for yourself. I mean, but my dad always said to me from the day, from the day I started training from the day, he said, Stevie, you know, it'd be great if you can lift the full weight of Denny's, but I want you to lift more. So when you go there on the day, mm. then you'll be able to, you know, that it'll be an easier lift. Because he was training yeah. up to 800 pounds. So whenever he went and lifted the Denny's, he thought they were 785, mm. they were 734. You know, so he, he yeah. said, I didn't find them light, but I didn't find them anywhere near, anywhere near as difficult as I expected them to be. Yeah. You know, so that's what yeah. you want. You want that on the day, that things are going to be easier for you, yeah. And in an ideal world, You'd, you'd kind of do some training runs with, I don't know, 195 in, you know, the, the big dinny and kind of 150 in the, the lighter replica and whatever, blah, blah, blah. You might even aim to walk with 200 and 155 or whatever. But yeah. actually achieving that is obviously not particularly easy, to go to yeah. that saying. Well, the, yeah. the other thing as well, and oh, look... I don't want to make excuses, but um, yeah, but training was that that lift that war that I did uh, just before Christmas, where I had full weight and I wore the full distance. Look, I've had I've had a couple of niggly injuries since then, and I've mm. I've had uh, you know I did have COVID, but again, a lot of people have had COVID. Uh, yeah, the the problem is, well, like a lot of people will tell you, it, it affects your training quite a bit. It um. Mm. I couldn't train hard for weeks after that. Yeah. So, look, I mean, every, but every single person that's ever achieved anything decent has had a little challenge along the way. So, of course, you have setbacks, and that's a small part of it. You got to pick up and move on. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about about you mean yeah. having to take a bit of time off because I I know that when I was when I was getting close to my kind of time, it was like I didn't want to miss a single training session but at the same time yeah. there were a few things that happened that made me miss it but then when you take a wee bit of extra time to recover 
you know, every mm-hmm. bit of the recovery because it's, it's not just your muscles need to recover and your tendons, it's your central nervous system. You know, there, there, mm-hmm. there's so many elements when you're working that heavy that need to be firing on all cylinders on the day. So it's getting that, mm-hmm. it's getting the timing of all that right, making sure you've got enough rest, good nutrition, you know, that you're training yeah. people, taking at the right time. You know, and your grip, what about your grip? I mean, you have a super, super solid grip. You know, you're one of these guys who can pick them up with open hand, no, no big deal, and you can even work with them with open hand. You know, but I mean, are you planning to use your thumb for the extra stability? You know, because it's just, it's just technique. You know, I mean, to me, people say, you know, open yeah. hand better than, 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 than hook grip. Hook grip brings its own challenge. You know, thumb grip, as I call it, with the, you know, kind of moving it across one, like not a, this bit here. I, I just see that as a technique. Yeah. You know, but, but why, why wouldn't you use technique if it's available to you, you know? So I'm just yeah. curious about, about well, what your mindset is in that. Yeah, so I've been, I've been working on that a little bit more recently. Uh, obviously, you shared that video with me a few days ago. I was doing probably a little bit of a variation on that one anyway. Yeah. Uh, but I got a really – the training that I did, for example, on Saturday, just gone, managed to get in a really – kind of comfy position and whatever. Uh, you know, hook grip, yes, it was squashing my thumb or whatever, like yeah. it kind of does. But it, yeah. it wasn't, didn't feel kind of brutal or whatever. Yeah. It just felt, you know, kind of, yeah, you want to kind of put the white down sooner rather than later, but, you know, whatever. Well, then, oh, did a bit more training yesterday, which was definitely, uh, yesterday obviously being um, Sunday here, because we're obviously Monday morning over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I did a bit more training yesterday. And oh, apart from the fact that I'd probably given too much to the training on, on Saturday to be able to do a good session, yeah. I couldn't get my hand in all my thumb in a very good position at all. Yeah. And I was, um, look, <laughs> um, and, you know, the kind of the confidence that I kind of, I suppose, developed on the yeah. uh, the previous day. Where I was like, oh, I'm flying with these, you know, this is yeah. this is going to kind of be no problem, or whatever. I, I, all of a sudden, I, the grip was feeling weak. I mean, I know that I'll probably relate to the central nervous system, kind of saying no thanks, yeah. you know, after the after the branding session that uh, that I'd done on on Saturday, it was pretty tough. So, um, you know, to to come back to the gym 23, 24 hours after that. And try mm-hmm. and get another a really try and get another really strong session in was probably a little bit uh, too much of an ask. But um, yeah, like I said, my my body said definitely said a big no thanks, and uh, yeah. I didn't get very much out of trying yesterday, unfortunately. And <laughs> to the point where I was feeling uh, I was feeling pretty crappy for most of the day. Actually, I think I'd mm-hmm. really I think I'd really dug into kind of the well on on Saturday, and then to. Yeah, to try and get anything out of myself beyond a bit of kind of light speed work yesterday. To to, to try and get anything out of myself was probably yeah. a couple of steps too far. Um, so yeah, look, like I said though, that was the ups and downs, the peaks and the troughs. Felt yeah, really was- super confident on super confident on um, on Saturday. Way less confident yesterday, and uh, I was suddenly like, how am I even going to pick up these? Um, you know, the one eight eight one four four. Uh, yeah. Whatever, you know, can't have in all these doubts. Will I be able to walk more than 50 centimetres? Will I be able to walk more than two or three steps and whatever? Whereas, you know, like I said, 24 hours prior, I, I felt super strong. Like, um, yeah. my, um, j- just like my kind of torso strength. Yeah. Like, I just feel like I can, um, feel like it can be twisted in all kinds of directions from, mm-hmm. from the, uh, the replicas or even the, the real stones. Yeah. And I just feel like it's not gonna throw me off. Despite the fact that um despite the fact that people seem to think that grip is a you know a real strength of mine, I'm not saying it's a you know a weakness or anything. I still think and I don't want to be too negative here, but I still think the most likely if I don't get the distance, the most likely thing thing to happen will be that my you know, my right hand comes open on, on Big Denny, no matter what kind of grip that I uh, I utilize. Yeah. Uh, because my, my, like I said, my torso strength, honestly, I can just, um, it's not even strength off the floor. It's it's the strength that I can kind of, um, or kind of the momentum that I can maintain 
mm-hmm. when <clears throat> when I kind of take a misstep and I get in a all kind of a twisted position. Yeah, yeah, I can just I can just recover. I, I've been I've done a lot of dodgy kind of uh, missteps or whatever in trying him, and yeah. as long as the grips are holding, like I just don't get thrown off. I just you know, I've kind of got, I suppose, that oblique strength and I've got that kind of, like I said, kind of trunk slash torso strength. And, yeah, that that, that, that won't be the reason. That won't be the reason that I, I uh, failed the lift if I don't get to to where I want to go. Yeah. If you don't have good core strength, you're not even picking the Denny's up. I mean, I refer, what you're talking about, I refer to that as core strength. And it's, as you say, it's the obliques. It's, your, it's, it's just your whole torso it just needs to be able to... Cause the, the minute that you stand up and you kind of get that where your shoulders are locked into that position, you're stood up, you're kind of in that lockout position, immediately gravity, you know, <laughs> 332 kilos is just wanting to just crush the, your, your whole torso. So you need to have that, that yeah. strength and stability, you know, particularly for the sustained effort that you have. You know, one of the things that I've made, but what I'm hearing here is in relation to your grip, you're wanting to use max weight for thumb grip for two days in a row. You, you don't need to do that for you. Your, your, your hand strength is not work on your hand strength, right? Use the thumb grip now and again, just so that you have the technique, okay? And when you're using the thumb grip, use it from the lightest weights right up to your max weight because that conditions your thumb. So therefore, when you reach you know your full one eight eight one four four, you're gonna feel as little pain as is possible to feel, you know, because you, you're mm-hmm. going to go, you know, your, your thumb always goes numb, but don't do it day after day because you're going to damage your nerves and your, and your thumb for a start because I've been there, <laughs> I've, I've, I've done okay. it, I use the grip all the time. So, that, you know, you need to let that recover. So use open hand. If you're going to do that two days in a yep. row, don't use your thumb yep. two days in a row. Yeah, to allow it to recover. Well. Your thumb's going to feel, and your nail's going to feel tingly and tender the next morning yep. after a session like that. So, let that feeling go away before you even consider using it again. You don't need to. You've got work on your strength. Just as long as you have that technique up your sleeve, then you can pull on it whenever you need it. That's the best advice I think I can give you on that. No, I def- definitely appreciate the, the advice, Stevie. Um, one of the other um, main challenges, of course, with the actual dinnies mm-hmm. relative to kind of any kind of replicas or whatever, even if you, um, even if you purposely kind of unbalance your your setup and whatever and I've, I've certainly done uh variations where you uh you know you hang a bit of weight off the front to kind of uh mm. of your if the you know replica pins to uh to try and replicate that swing and whatever but no matter what unless you've actually got a stone the size of big dinny mm. to practice with and, and i don't personally maybe yeah. maybe it would have been more kind of thorough with my preparation maybe I would have <laughs> organised something like that but, but I don't uh, it's the reality um, the size of Big Dinny like walking with a stone that size kind of rests on your leg or uh, you know mm-hmm. kind of against your shin or, or this sort <laughs> of thing it's not, it's not the discomfort of it banging against the shin, which is one thing, because mm-hmm. basically it doesn't bounce around. It's heavy enough that it's kind of, it's just leaning against you. So it's not, yeah. it's not really gonna, it's not gonna knock into it like something's kicking you or, mm-hmm. or hitting you in the shin that way. What I'm saying is, it's just the sheer bulk of it. It's just, yeah. you can't get good, you can't get good big strides in because yeah. it's just so crazily, like I said, bulky. Yeah, it's can't. It just, it's just in the way. <laughs> there's, there's nothing I, mean, to do. I think any strides that you get in with, with plates, you know, if if you're able to get big strides in with plates, I think when it comes to having big dinny in your right hand, you'll not get those massive strides in because you it's you so that. that momentum. You know, you're, on, on that small with the way the hook is under that small bolt. You know, I mean, you have basically that much of contact between the ring and the bolt. You know the eye bolt mm-hmm. that's in the dinny, so yeah, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. way you can stop that spinning. You know, so it's it's practicing that thing. I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I'm telling you, this, you've done it, you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I see it, oh, yeah. you know, and I kind of know what's what's going on with it. Obviously, I've never done it or tried it, but I can see <laughs> that as soon as that big dinny starts to come forward with any kind of momentum, particularly if you bring your right foot past your left foot, then that mm-hmm. automatically creates that that forward momentum. You know, where you need to keep that yeah. big one behind you. 
the little one will jiggle about and it'll bang into your knees and bang into your, like you say, bang into your shins. But if Big Denny touches your shin, that's the front of your leg. Yep. I say, I think it's game over. It needs to be on your calf, doesn't it? Yep. The closer you can get it to your calf, the better. Yeah. And then, you know, then you start thinking about the, the starting position and whatever. And then there's some kind of swings and roundabouts and whatever, where if you start it, you know, kind of a bit of a staggered way. Still going for the side-by-side pickup, obviously. But if yeah. you kind of one stone's a little bit ahead of the other or whatever to, to try and kind of negate that, then, um, you know, that's not the strongest starting position. And there's and then there's just all kinds of, like I said, compromises. That, that'll that give me an extra strength there, but it'll make me weaker there. That'll enable yeah. me to do this part a bit better, but not that part. And then I've been... Um, I've been trying to um, work on having my hand on Big Dinny a little bit further than the kind of center of the ring. Okay. So again, to try and be able to to try and be able to control the swing. But of course, <laughs> the negative of that is that rather than kind of lifting, I suppose, vertically and having almost a kind of straight handle or the straightest mm-hmm. handle you can have. Um, yeah. Sorry, the most, I suppose, horizontal uh, handle you can have. You, you, you then go to a semi kind of vertical handle or whatever, and then that's obviously very, very difficult to yeah. to grip onto from a weight perspective, even though yeah. it's um, easier to control the swing. It's yeah. not easy to control the actual, you know, weight, I suppose. Yeah, so it's um, a kind of thing to thought of. There's, there's all kinds of um, solutions, and but but like I said, every everything that gives you an advantage in one regard gives you a disadvantage in another. The only way that it wouldn't is obviously if they were perfectly balanced stones. But we know they're not. That's that's a yeah, challenge. Yeah. That's hey, that's um, armor guarantee then. You know, which is which is a different ball game altogether. Yeah, you know, I think that's what I mean, makes this challenge so unique is the imbalance and in, in the in the yeah. weights and the the difference in the size of the rings, you know, that's and the fact that they move around where farmers would be, be a more static pickup, you know. I mean, obviously farmers Absolutely. can move, but it's not not in the same way, you know. And it, all, all stones, even look at the look at the nickel walking stones. It partly now yeah. I I've only ever picked them up. When I pick those up, I find them easy to pick up. But it's like somebody's nailed my feet to the ground. <laughs> I just can't yeah. move the body with the move. But I hear anybody oh, that, that does actually walk on say it's the little one banging off the, their leg that actually causes more problems than the big one, you know? And yeah, so no, no. The, yeah, the nickel walking stones are not easy to walk with because Brett brought them along when I attempted the... Well, he actually brought them along both days. When I attempted uh, my little attempt five days before, um, yeah. You know the History Channel thing. When, yeah. when I did that attempt, Brett took them along, and I was surprised at how difficult they actually were. Because I yeah. was thinking to myself in the warm up, you know, if I can't even walk well with these, how am I going to walk well with the Dinnies? Which wasn't exactly the best mindset to uh, <laughs> to get into. Yeah, and well, he that, got it. Yeah. And um, and then Brett again brought them along, like I said, for uh, for Brian Shaw and all that. And um, mm-hmm. again. You know, I didn't try and walk too many steps. I just tried to uh, create a little bit of, bit of momentum without, you know, taking too much kind of energy out of myself. And that were, yeah, that yeah. weren't easy at all. And then yeah, the, the um, thing, warming up and, and actually stress, stressing yourself, you know, because you need to push yourself a bit to get the, get the blood flowing. You know, I mean, anytime I've gone to yeah. any, you know, particularly recently, or my, my last few attempts, I didn't have anything really worthwhile to warm up on. You know, so it's actually your oh. third lift. But the, the time you get to your third, mm. when things are firing and you're you're feeling good and you know you know there's a bit of blood in your muscles and stuff and you you do your, your third one's the best and I noticed that with Chloe as well, you know that when mm-hmm. she did her first two lifts there were there were great efforts to so the first one you can see that we're starting to come the second one there was a the wee yeah. hop on the big stone in the third one there's the switch went on but you could tell you know the blood was in you know she got her mind right and and boom up the cable it was great to see and I I, I get that because there's not an awful lot of warm up. Available on that. I mean, we talked about this the other day, you know, about what your yeah, plan, absolutely. about your warm up plan, you know, before you come. Because if Brett can't make it with the stones, what do you do? Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's have to think of those things in advance. You know, what do you do with the wee one and the big one? Load your place up to full weight and, and get a bit of a routine. Well, if um, 
if Brad can't make it with the Stones and Brad can't make it with... Not he will. He will. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he will. Let, let's, yeah. Go, let's go hypothetical for a second. Yeah. Um, you, you do double-handed warm-ups with um, Little Denny. Mm -hmm. Then you do, just, just statically, then you do double-handed warm-ups with Big Denny. Yeah. Then you do single... Then you do single-handed um, warm-ups with, uh, with uh, Little Dimmy. Then mm -hmm. you go single-handed warm-up with um, Big Dimmy. Yeah. Then you go. Um, then I reckon you go a uh, double-handed duck walk with Big Dimmy. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be kind of progression on the warm-up and whatever. Um, if, 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 if there was nothing else there available. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You know, cause it's the sort of thing I've been mean, I've talked to a lot of guys out there say, look, have a wee think about your warm-up. Because when you arrive, yep. you know, even just for, even just for, when some guys are coming on for a lift, you know, to just think about mm -hmm. what you're, what you're coming into. You're not coming into a gym where you have, you like, maybe your, 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 your Gordon's pins to warm up on a load of plates and stuff like that. Yep. You're just coming in. Two big rocks sitting there, go. <laughs> You know, and we're not all, we're not all like Brett. We can't all just walk in and just go, ah, we got a chop and just pick them up and go, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is amazing. Absolutely. But, I mean, you know, us normal normal people, us mortals, have to warm up a wee bit, yep. you know. Yep, absolutely. Just give me a sec. Sorry. Uh, just uh, kind of half watching the time and just watching something else. Uh, give me right. a sec. Uh, yep. Um, yeah, all good. Um, yeah, look, I've, um, I've definitely got another quarter of an hour or so. I mean, I'd... Uh, like I said, in theory, I'd, I'd talk for hours on this. Like, uh, well, like you said, you talk for five hours. I'd talk for hours too. Probably going to uh, start heading to work in in about fifteen minutes. But yeah, yeah. Um, look, like, like I said, I probably said it a couple of times already. But um, just, I just need to do it. There's, uh, <laughs> this will probably be, um, you know, because I do live in this country or whatever. Because I do live fifteen, sixteen thousand kilometers or kind of 10 ish thousand miles away from yeah. england the away from scotland should i stay away from the uk um it's um yeah look i've i've it's getting close to now or never i'm not saying that i'll never get another chance but it's um i certainly think we're at the point where if i um uh, if i don't achieve it sometime soon then someone else will beat me to it anyway i mean there's obviously yeah. There's, you know, two main people that I've obviously seen, uh, Kevin Ferris um, and, and Big Laws, obviously, for... Absolutely, yeah. Did their big efforts. They obviously did their big efforts on two different... You know, one was on the replicas, one was on the real things. Um, and then there's... I, I know there are, you know, half a dozen other people that have... Um, They've done a pretty good job with them. Uh, some people mm -hmm. have actually uh, done them in um, in Scotland. Obviously, um, Josh Gorilla Brown and whatever obviously wore yeah. them um, several the feet. Yeah. The um, then there's other people that have watched some pretty decent efforts in, in training. I'm um, yeah. seeing more and more people kind of do pretty decent walks with um, with the actual uh, with the nick uh, with the nickel weight and whatever yeah. so look I, I certainly um if i've not mentioned people specifically it doesn't mean that i don't think they'll uh they'll achieve it it just means i've probably not seen that <laughs> seen that attempts well you know you know the, 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 thing, the thing about yours thing pete is you know when obviously we, we talked about this during lockdown and you know it's, it's it's not the sort of thing you just say right i'll bring it in for next wednesday and go and do it you know because you because it's yeah. such an extreme thing, you've got to be ready, and the stars all have to align. You know, the travel has to be right, your training has yeah. to be right. And I've got to get a date sorted out. Right. You know, we've got to, the weather's got to be. There's all sorts of things that need to kind of be at, at, at the right place at the right time. You know, and, and so yeah. many things we've talked about this, and, and they haven't. You know, for various reasons. You know, obviously we had the other injury a few years ago. There, there's been COVID yeah. for the last two years, but I honestly, genuinely think now the stars are aligned for you, brother. I do think if you stand, I mean, for me, I can see you at the other side of the bridge. You know, I can see you at, at, at the end of 17 feet, one and a half inches, and setting them down for the first time after picking them up 17 feet, one and a half inches ago. That's what I see in my mind. 
I want you to see that in your mind too and nothing else between now. Yeah. And when you do this, you know, and we're going to talk about that again and again and again and I'm going to do your head on about it, but mindset, mm. you know, technique, you know, your technique's great, your yeah. strength great, you've got, you've got all the tools <laughs> that you have, it. you have, it. and I know everybody else yeah. watching you feels the same. <laughs> Appreciate all that, Stevie. I tell you, one of the negative things that does go through my head, apart from, like I said, apart from that pre-COVID, when I say pre-COVID, I'm not talking two years ago, I'm talking yeah. before I contracted COVID. Apart from that um, kind of walk in December, where I'd, um, like I said, two or three weeks before I contracted COVID, I've, I've not walked done the full distance for the full weight in, in training. I've yeah. not, like I said, I've not quite got back up to that strength yet now yeah. here's the thing we all know that let's say you've got a deadlift and whatever weight someone can can deadlift they can they can lift x kilos or whatever mm-hmm. quite easily and they can um you know they can lift maybe x kilos plus five all of a sudden becomes kind of difficult and then mm-hmm. x kilos plus 10 becomes very difficult yeah. and then that's x kilos plus maybe only an extra 15 kilos can go from a pretty comfy lift well yes you've got to put effort in yes you've yeah. got to you know get your yeah, 10 yeah, right yeah. and the, the whole yeah. thing but all of a sudden 15 20 kilos can be the difference between a really smooth quite comfy but tough lift and not even getting it off the ground and I'm concerned <laughs> if I'm honest with you that even though for example on Saturday morning I did like I said a, a couple of really strong runs with one in particular was, was strong with 173 in the right hand and 129 mm. in the left hand Yeah, and you know it felt pretty comfy especially the second of the runs right mm-hmm. um it, to the point where I held it for a second or, you know, kept, uh, you know, got myself still, held it for a second or two after after the walk, after I'd already walked kind of, you know, about 18, 19 feet with it. Yeah. And it, it was strong. But there's still another 15 kilos that needs to go on each side. Yeah. That's, that's, a lot, that's a lot of extra kilos. <laughs> but you, yeah, but you've been there, you're just getting back to where you were. I think that's that's the key thing is to say, look, I've been there, I've done this, I can do this, I just want to do it again. And one of the things that we talked about, and I, I, I tell everybody this, and it's actually a carryover from my days when I played golf. Uh, they talk about golfers mm. having a pre-shot routine. You know, so if you, if you watch all the top golfers, doesn't matter who it is, it'll be Tiger Woods, anybody at all, mm. then when they stand up, they hit a golf ball, they do exactly the same set of sequence of moves mm. to get them to the position where they actually hit the ball. You know, for me, whenever uh-huh. I, I lift, should it be a deadlift or lifting on the rings, I repeat the same sequence every single time, whether it's in competition, whether it's with some yeah. friend, whether it's on my own, because it's, it's getting your mind to say, right, once you start this sequence, oh, he's going to lift something really heavy now in your butt. And it, trust me, it absolutely works. Because what happens mm. is if you take that from the gym to Petark with you and you repeat those yeah. exactly same things. What's going to happen is when you step up to the, to the stones for the first time before you lift, you're going to say, oh, there's Brett, yeah. there's Jim, there's all those people watching me, there's the stones, there's cars going past. That's, where you're, that's what uh-huh. your senses will tell you at the time. Once you start those sequence of moves that you've practiced uh-huh. all those months and you start to do that, and you put your hand on the right one, you get your hand set, you get your feet set, you pick up the, the little one, and you're in that position where you're ready to lift. By that stage, all the noise, all the surrounding distractions, they will have to go. You know, all of the, the, the mental doubts, all the things that can creep in. If you're doing that, get rid of all that. And trust me, it works. Practice it. You know, I promise uh-huh. you, I absolutely promise you that that is a very sound technique that all the top athletes use in all of the sports where it's a so yeah performance you know it's definitely worth practicing you know it doesn't matter what the events are it doesn't matter how you do it you know so it'll be unique to you because everybody when they when they lift these things are going to do their own sequence of moves so you just get ones uh-huh. that work for you and then repeat them it doesn't matter if there's 100 yeah. kilos in the rings or 400 kilos in the rings do the same things and then on the day use that uh-huh. it'll, yeah. it'll help you brother it really will it will I appreciate that. I um, 
I like a bit of a kind of almost like a, a false cup pull. I don't even know what the uh, kind of technical word for it would be. Mm-hmm. Where yeah. I like to actually do the setup, mm-hmm. and people think that uh, um, people think that I'm kind of um, oh, I'm messing about and and kind of um, you know not kind of committing to it. But yeah. I, on on the heavy lifts, yes, I do the full setup, and then I. I kind of put in 80 or 90% effort. I like to feel most of the weight in yep. my hands, but uh-huh. not actually budge it. And then yep. I like to let go. And yeah, then okay. I like to let go. And then I like to reset up. And it looks like I'm kind of doubting myself, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to deny the fact that some of there might be some self doubt there, but actually it's, <clears> it's a really strange one. I've done, I've done it probably quite a bit over the years where, I like to feel most of that force, but but just not. It just feels like it might switch on a little bit more of my uh, central nervous system, I suppose. You know what? If, if you see, if, if you see if that works for you, if, if that's what you're doing, don't do it now and again. Do it every time. You know, start using yeah. that. If that's if that's if that's a trigger yeah. that you have that you say that's, that switches things on, use it every time. Yeah. Pete, use it to the point where it becomes yeah. second nature. You don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just an automatic mm-hmm. pilot, you know, because, the, the, I mean, the, you can't be thinking about how's my right hand going, how's my left hand going, where's my feet position, you know, where should I put my hips? That should all be, you shouldn't have to think about that. That should all come, you know, completely second nature. So it is, so the, yeah. that is the thing that you have, that, that, that move where you kind of go in, pull to about 80 or 90%, mm-hmm. feel the weight off them, let go, go back, set up and go. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. You know, use, the, yeah. use that to your advantage, yeah. you know, because it will help you. You know, because it removes all of that, those external distractions. I'm really excited. I yep. swear yep. I cannot wait to see you do this. I really can't. You know, <laughs> I'll, 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 you know, because you, you tell you what, they're going to be. A, it's going to be a very lonely entry. <laughs> so is, you know, ultimately, here, here's the thing, Pete. You've already done it. Okay, all you're trying to do now is do it in a different way. You know, no matter what happens, you are one of five men. That's listed since Donald Denny of having carried the stones the full width of the bridge under their own steam. You know, you, no, nobody, no matter what, nobody yeah. can ever take that away from you. Five men in 160 years. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's all the guys who come yeah. behind you and do it. I have no doubt about that. You know, so no matter what yeah. happens, all you're trying to do is trying to push yourself that wee bit further. But the end result will still be the same. You will still have carried the stones for that distance of 17 feet, one and a half inches. You know, this is a yeah. personal challenge for you now. You want to do it without setting them down. Who it is, you know, and it's a hell of a challenge you've set yourself, but I think it's very achievable. I really oh, I'll tell you what, it was... Um, you I, was my <laughs> I was I was questioning my sanity yesterday. Like I said, I um, really did feel pretty crappy yesterday because I just, like I said, I tried to dig too deep, you know, to, you know, on two consecutive days, and I felt ill all yesterday, and I was really questioning my sanity, and I, I, it actually reminded me of something I'd heard um, Bill Crawford say kind of the week earlier when he was coming to, uh, commentating on the uh, the replica carries at, um, at the Arnolds, and he yeah. was saying, it, it was, I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something like, um, he said, every single person that ever has uh, either lifted these up or, or tried to walk with them, Questions, you know, just ask the, themselves a simple question: Why? But just, just a one-word question: Why? Why, why am I doing this? I <laughs> um, because you can. I don't, I don't, <laughs> because I you can. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? Here's the thing. Definitely... I mean, yeah. If you weren't having doubts, Pete, you wouldn't be human. You know, I mean, we're just. I mean, I, I remember Dad telling me when he and in '72 he went over, right? And nobody had done this for a hundred years. And he was thinking that he could do it. You know, reasonably comfortable at yeah. home. He went over. He arrived there. Yeah. He seen the stones. You know, the, 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 news, the newspaper reporters and all came actually walked past him. They were looking for some big yeah. guy that, you know, that, that didn't even take that yeah. on his notice. He thought, I must have missed something here. You know, what am I doing here? He had all the, all the doubt kicked in, which is why he did the wee sneaky lift on the Saturday before yeah. he did the lift on the first day on the Monday. You know, yeah, yeah. the amount of times that I said, you know, excuse my French, what the fuck am I doing here? 
you know, who am I kidding? Mm-hmm. When I was trying to get myself up, I had a real sticky point of 320 kilos. You know, so I only yeah. had 13 to go when I had a sticking point. And it took me a long time to get past it. And I thought, what are you doing? You know, it was nights I came in and said, hello, what? I'm just, I, you know, I've had enough. You know, my back's too mm-hmm. sore, my hands are sore. You know, who am I kidding? I'm in my 50s now. This is never going. All the negative self-talk came in. You know, and then I just had a moment. I said, you know what? I am never going to talk to myself like this again until I have done yeah. this. And I put it all yeah. away. And when I felt the creep creeping in, I tried to change my thought patterns and really focused on the mental side. And the next, yeah. the, the, the full weight came very shortly after that. Self-talk is, yeah. self-talk is, is such a powerful tool. Positive Absolutely. self-talk. You know, when I say self talk's a powerful tool, negative self talk's a powerful tool, and positive self talk oh, yeah. is an equally powerful tool. So choose which one you want to use, you know what I mean? Choose it carefully. Absolutely. Um, I mean, like I said, going back to those two walks that I did with a decent way to the weekend just gone. Yeah. Um, they're about, they about 18, 19 feet. I didn't measure them exactly, but. Um, you know, I kind of pace them out. I know roughly how, if you like, long my feet are. Yeah. And uh, I pace them out, and they were they were about the 18 and a half feet, basically, um, about, about five and a half meters. And um, what was I going to say? Yeah, the, the first of them, that's the one where I kind of lost the balance uh, midway and whatever. Um, but, but the second one, I just, I just got the Big Dinny replica in... It was about 91% of the Big Dinny White. I uh, uh-huh. got it in, it might have been close to 92, 91, 92%, can't remember now. Um, 91% or so, Big Dinny White, and I just got it in the perfect position on my, my right leg. And yeah. my grip felt spot on. And, I'm, and I just thought to myself, I feel like I could walk these, you know, I reckon I could have walked them eight or nine metres, the position yeah. that I got myself into. Um, yep. I put like I said, I put them down after five and a half meters because that was the plan. Yep. Um, but I, I thought to myself there, and then even mid walk, I thought if I can get that position, uh-huh. and I know it's harder. I know it's harder with a natural stone. Of course, it's harder with a natural stone. But if I can get something close, big dinny in something uh-huh. like that position, yeah. And it's obviously you said the done because if if it was that easy, everyone would do it. But if mm-hmm. I can to the kind of millimeter get it in that position on my kind of calf, yeah, then the, these then the real stones yeah, are, are going the full distance. But it's, yeah. oh, that was, but you, you know that that just happens with static lifts as well, doesn't it? You sometimes mm-hmm. you just absolutely nail the technique. The, the line yep. slash the technique absolutely bang on, oh, and yeah. then you say to yourself, "Why can't I do this every single time?" Yeah, and then you know what? So there's more variables when you've got dinny pins, and then there's quite a few more variables again when, when you've got up. um when you've got the actual stone. So kind of saying it and doing it. That's what I guess what I've been talking about. Uh, that's been the theme of the whole thing. Yeah. Saying it and doing it are very, very, very different, but. Uh, by the on the same at the same time, like you've said, you definitely don't achieve it by by being negative about it. So you've <laughs> as hard as it is, yeah. That's what you, you know. You, you've got to be positive. Tip. I'll give you a really good tip, and I, I got this tip years ago, and it was from from an old. I I was I wasn't long. Uh, I, I've been playing drums now for about forty years, so it's probably about four mm-hmm. or five years end of playing career. You know, maybe mm-hmm. maybe, maybe maybe ten years. You know, but I was doing all right. You know, and we've been mm-hmm. some big gigs and stuff, and and people would say to me after a show, down again, you know, it's I really enjoyed your show. Your drumming was great, and I'd say, well, I didn't play too well. I made a mistake there, and you know, you you kind of play yourself down a wee bit. And this mm-hmm. guy, they said to me, well, we we're actually we we're playing golf, and I told him about that, and he said, to me, mm-hmm. he said, do yourself a favour. If somebody gives you a compliment, just say thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it, because you're not <laughs> saying, you're not saying yes. I was brilliant. You know, wasn't I great? You're not doing that. You're not being big-headed, mm-hmm. but you're also you're also allowing yourself yep. to receive the compliment, and you're allowing the person to give the compliment. So they feel good that you've accepted yep. it. You feel good because you've accepted it, and all you've done is say thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we all have confidence in you. You know, so thank you, Stevie, for your confidence in me. I take that. You have faith in me. I'm going to. Yeah, this is this is no. part of the mind game. We've got to play the mind game here as well, Pete. 
as a strength. You're doing great yeah. in the strength game. You really are. You know, so let's get the mind no. game forward in this as well. No, I definitely appreciate all of the um the uh, you know, positive feedback that I get. I, I appreciate your positive feedback, Brett's positive feedback and there's yeah. you know, obviously oh, probably about a dozen other people that regularly message me. Yeah. And then there's um and then there's a few other people that kind of message me kind of here and there on top of that. Yeah. And I, well, every single every single one of those people I definitely appreciate the support. I don't want to start Listing people because I'll end up missing someone. But, um, I know, I know. I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, listen, mate. Well, well, just do yourself a favor. Picture yourself every now and again when you're sitting in this quiet. Picture yourself at the end of seventeen feet, one and a half inches. Just keep keep picture setting them down. Mission accomplished. Just keep picturing that and picture that. Right. Picture that successful conclusion to your your thing, you know, and, and then just do the training and allow some recovery. You're only human. Yeah. <laughs> you know, particularly when you're talking about the grip, you get in the next day and everything feels, you know, because you're still recovering from the day before, you know, particularly things like your thumb. I remember that the sting yeah. and, the, and the, you know, the, the just how yeah. tender it was, you know. It's, yeah. You're a machine, but you're nah. still like a human machine. <laughs> <laughs> nah. you are. Actually, yeah. Um... To, to, to be honest with you, um, like I don't want to kind of um, kind of blow my own trumpet too much or anything, but a few, a few people, a few people say to me, it, it's quite a regular kind of comment that people say. They're like, "How do you put yourself through so much punishment?" I'm like, "I don't know." Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, yeah. to, to be honest with you, like yes, I've had a couple of back issues um, over time, and yes, I. I had a, a couple of pretty uh, decent muscle tears a few years ago and mm-hmm. whatever else. But but in terms of major, major, major injuries, I I I'd definitely argue that I've not had one. I mean, like I so said, we can all we can all um kind of decide on our little kind of scale what's major, what's not major and whatever. But I I definitely say I've been fortunate enough not to have a, a major, major one. I've not had I'm thinking of of some of the issues that some kind of some strength must athletes have had. Must be, must be so, um, no, uh, look, I was I was probably born with quite a, I suppose, a, a reasonably robust kind of <laughs> structure or whatever, and um, yeah, 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 just managed to just managed to uh, you know use it quite well or whatever, I suppose, in in this yeah. space. But anyway, Stevie, I really appreciate the chat. Um, Bring it. You go and see the room. To work now, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, um, it has been an yeah. absolute pleasure talking to you as always, and we wish you continued success with your with your training. And um, we're all looking yeah. forward to seeing you at the other side of this with mission accomplished and being able to tell you, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, um, how do I phrase it just to wrap things up? Um. Like I've already said, if I um, had a phrase, I'm trying to think of a, of a, of a nice little wrap up. Um, I, I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not going over there for the sightseeing. As, as nice as uh, no. as nice as the scenery in uh, in Scotland yeah. is, as nice as the scenery in the UK is, I'm definitely. I'm definitely not going for the sightseeing. I'm, I'm. I am going there for one thing. Stay focused. Stay focused. And I'm good. I'm glad to hear you say that. That's that's keep that, develop that, you know. And remember one thing too. I mean, Donald Denny was about sixteen stone. You're about sixteen mm-hmm. stone. So you're about the same sort of. I've put on a bit of weight now. I've put, I've put on. A, yeah, I've, I've intentionally put on a little bit of. Um, you know, a lot of it's probably fat, but I've uh, I've been trying to stuff in the calories recently. To yeah, I think I. Uh, I think if you saw me, you'd think I looked uh, a little bit, whether it's uh, bigger in the belly or bigger elsewhere. You, I, th- I think I think I'm, you know, I've put on I've put on a bit of weight since then. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 certainly over sixteen stone anyway. But yeah, well I know what you're saying. I'm I'm not anyway. I'm certainly not the size of I'm certainly not the size of uh, Eddie Hall or anyone like that. <laughs> My mass moves mass, as they say. But uh, the thing is, with the legend of, of Denny and, and you know all his dimensions. You know, for somebody like you to come along with his dimensions, you know, and, and to do that, that's, you know, that's, 
that's a good story. It is, you know, but I want to see you succeed. I want to see Kevin Ferris succeed. I want to see my mate Lars succeed. I want you all to succeed in any way I can, I can do to help that. I will do that for you, I promise. You know, but yeah, just keep up the good work, mate. It's been great talking to you. And I, I will save this video this time. Sure. <laughs> and we can look back on it and say, what? Shake for we talking. No, good on you, mate. Good no, on that'll you. be good. That'll be good, Stevie. Um, yeah, no, like I said, really enjoyed it. Really glad to, uh, really happy to catch up. Um, I hope um, the people watching uh, enjoyed it. Uh, sorry they didn't really uh, respond to the uh, messages as we went along. Thanks for uh, anyone that did. We have a look on the, uh, on the comments as we were going along there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, um, yeah. Well, the only thing to say is, good eye, mate. Yeah. Good eye. <laughs> All right. Cheers, mate. Catch you later. Cheers, Take it easy. See, See you. Bye. Take it easy, mate. Bye.